Good morning, everyone. It is truly a pleasure to be with you here today. I love talking about education. And let me explain why education is so important to me. I come from a, a family where my father was raised in Mexico on a ranch. Uh, my mom um, grew up in southern Arizona. She got married when she was a junior in high school. She was older because she had had um, scarlet fever and had missed a whole year of school. So, but and my dad, um, his senior year in high school, a horse threw him and he broke his leg. He was in a cast for six months. He graduated. My mom did not graduate. But my brother, my sister, and I are all college graduates, and we know the importance of education. Any success that I've been able to have in my life is because of my education, and I have a great passion for education. Uh, I'm in the field and have been for over 30 years of metrology. Um, metrology is the science of measurement, and especially what our industry is in is inspection, quality assurance, making sure that an in, a part, manufactured part, is within engineering specification. I, 25 years ago, um, me and a fellow um, that I met at Locking Missiles in Space, where we were both working, started a company. Uh, after 11 years, we sold it and continued to work there. We each had a three-year contract, and at the end of that three years, I, they offered me another three years to continue working. But at the time, uh, a gentleman named Stan Lockhart and John Dougal came to me and asked me to run for the state board. And I said, what is that? What do they do? <laughs> and so I did some quick investigation and, and determined that was something that mattered to me. And so I retired. So I was 49 years old. So I could focus on education because I wanted to spend all the time I could on it. And I was able to do a lot of things because of that. I was on the national, I was a Western District um, Director of the National Associations of um, State Boards of Education. I spent that time studying education. I went to BYU. I met Dean Young and talked with him at the time. I got all the books I could on education, started reading and studying and thinking about it. I was seeking out what education was and what it meant to me. During this time, I learned several things. The biggest thing I learned was that education can come in many forms. I am not um, one of those that says a district school is the only way you can be taught. I believe in district schools, charter schools, private schools, homeschooling. I believe in education of children. And however that's best for your child or other children, I'm in favor of. I'm not held up on, on what way it is. So let me continue on here. One last thing, please have an open mind. Uh, usually when people hear about what I'm going to talk about, their first reaction is, it'll never work. It's, it's just goes against everything I've been learned, that I've lived and I've done. And that's true, it does in many ways. But think about it, ponder upon it. I've considered and pondered on this for many years now. And for me, this is one of the best ways that a child can learn. I believe it's the way Father in Heaven intended us to learn. Time. Critical in this mortal existence, time is so valuable on what we do with it, what we have, how we're using it. We all have the same amount of time. How are we using it to educate ourselves? Even now in your life, how are you using your time to educate yourself? I believe one of the best ways to determine how you're using your time is what are your goals for education, for your children, for yourself? These are my important goals of education that I see. To become a lifelong learner and enjoy learning. To be a moral person. To be a problem solver, to be, be self-reliant and self-confident, to know how to set goals and complete them, to be able to work with others and collaborate, to be prepared for higher education or career by being able to read, write, and understand finance. This is kind of how, in many ways, we see education. There's a time clock there. There's lots of testing nowadays. 
There's lots of cheating going on in our high schools because they have to get those best grades to get into the best school. A lot of things are happening. This kind of model started with the Persian model, which came about 200 years ago when it first started up with compulsory education and other things. What it does is it prepares our students for this. I've been in factories all over the world, particularly automobile factories, and it looks a lot like what the students are, are in. When did you learn the most, and when did you enjoy education? For me, I enjoyed it when I had a passion for the subject. I love history. In fact, while my professor in my junior in high school was lecturing, I was sat there and just read the book. I hardly listened to his lectures, and I got an A. I just wanted to read everything that was in the book. I wanted to know what was there. Design drafting, that led to computer-aided design, computer-aided manufacturing, led me into the career that I had. Geometry, that's the basis. I use that regularly, and music. I love music. The arts are so important. I'm a better engineer because of the arts. If I didn't have the music, the art in my life, I wouldn't be as good an engineer as I am. And we see that go away so many times. The other time I enjoyed and learned the most is when I had control over it. When I was able to select my electives and in university where I had more control. After I got my bachelor's, I went and worked for three years for two different companies. I wanted to gain experience and knowledge because I was going to go back to graduate school. When I went back to graduate school, I prepared um, what I studied was um, computer integrated manufacturing and business. I had taken business classes prerequisites before going back to graduate school. I enjoyed graduate school more than any time in my life of education because I knew why I was there. I had the context that was mentioned. I knew the context. I knew why I was taking almost every single class. Some were required, but that's okay. And I had a blast in graduate school. I enjoyed it immensely. So how should we educate our children? Why do we have schools? Uh, I, I read this joke yesterday about a teacher that said, well, why should we have schools? And a student responded by saying, well, if we didn't have schools, there'd be no reason for holidays and, vac and summer vacation. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's all too true. Um, I'm the father of five daughters. I now three of them are married, and I have seven grandchildren. I'm just getting going on like these guys, but you know, I see my, my oldest daughter with her four children. She's done public school, she's done home school, she's in a charter school now, and she's trying and looking to see what works best for her and her children. Our current system is only about 150 years old. In fact, I was reading a school history book that the Wisconsin School um, Teachers Union in the 1860s made the statement publicly that the children belong to us, the state, not to their parents. And so we need to do everything we can to educate them. And that hurt me when I heard that, or read that. How do we effectively prepare our students for the 21st century with a 19th century education? I like this statement by John Adams. If one knows how to learn, it is enough. It is enough if you know how to learn. You read and I see daily, what are the jobs gonna be in 10 or 15 years? We can't, we don't know yet. The jobs today aren't what they were 10, 15 years ago. How do you train someone for those jobs in the future when they're not even known? Example, this is a product, SPC Touch. Um, me and another individual designed this a couple of years ago, laid it out, what we needed. It was, we had a big need, we were talking to um, Volkswagen and some other big companies about what needs they had. We devised this. What SPC stands for is Statistical Process Control and Touch. It was on an iPad or an Android device. We started developing it, doing some work, had some great stuff. And about a month ago, I canceled the project. I stopped all development on it. I had found a new technology that had just come out that blew away everything we were trying to do. We had to start over and actually we're going to have a product out sooner than what this would have, which is better, cheaper, and will make us a whole lot more money. 
that's how technology is changing in this day and age. And you have to be able to learn and grow with it. There is a school that I believe prepares students better than any other. It's called Sudbury Valley School. How many of you heard of Sudbury Valley? Good, there's a few of you. Sudbury Valley School has been around for over 45 years. It's locate, the initial one is located in Framingham, Massachusetts on 10 acres of land next to a state park. It is a truly agency-based education. It is a school where students really enjoy attending. As we talk about what our goals in life and, and such are, I believe in the plan of happiness. I believe happiness is what we want, what we all want. We strive to get educated so we can get a good job, so we can support a family and get children and grandchildren. That's what brings me happiness. I work to support them. A school with age mixing, where everyone is treated with respect. When I was on the state board, there were studies done that showed that schools that are K through eight, where you have eighth graders and seventh graders working with first graders and kindergartners. School discipline is, isn't a problem because those, there's something about working with someone younger that it changes their lives. They're providing a service. So they're helping them to learn to read. And that changes the whole school environment. This is a school that combines freedom with responsibility. These are, um, I purchased the packet for starting one of these schools. And there's over 15 books that come in the packet as well as a bunch of other information. In one of their books, they listed the goals of the school. And these are them. If you looked at what I, goals I had, several of them match up. Self-reliance, creativity, joy of learning, moral sensitivity. So what has this school accomplished? Students have the freedom to choose what they study and accomplish. They learn to exercise their agency. Students have the gift of time to focus on their passions. Students and staff govern the school. Students and staff maintain the judicial system. Students learn to live and work with others of all ages, particularly adults. Students are prepared for college and career. 80% of the students continue their education. Most get into their first choice of institution. I have to share with you a story in one of the books about a young woman who had gone through Sudbury Valley her whole career, K-12 equivalent. And she had chosen the school that she wanted to go to. They had the program she wanted. And she filled out the application and went and was hoping to hear back. But she didn't want to leave it the chance because she didn't have a uh, the grades to show because there was no testing, there's no grades. So she made an appointment with the dean of the school that she was going to be a part of, she had applied to. And she went and visited with him. He asked her right off, what do you want to know about the school? And she said, I've already decided this is where I want to go, this is where I need to be. I want to tell you about myself. And she proceeded to tell who she was and what she did and why she wanted to go there. After an hour of speaking, the time was up. He thanked her for coming in and said, you're the type of student we want. You're in. She did not leave it the chance. She, in going to Sudbury Valley, knew how to talk to adults. She had self-confidence. She believed in herself. She knew what she could do, and she knew what she wanted. I'd like to show I don't normally like doing this, but this video shows you a real quick idea of what the school is like.
you ask just about any SVS student what they're going to do today, uh, chances are you're not going to get a very articulate answer. Maybe because they don't want to talk to you, but it's probably because uh, they don't know. But if you ask them like what you're interested in, I mean, that's, that's a whole different story. You'll probably get a very, very articulate answer. And a student not knowing exactly what they're going to do, but knowing what they like, just going to immerse themselves in whatever interest that they have, whatever activity. It's a beautiful campus. It is soothing to come into. I feel like when you pull into the parking lot at school, it's just kind of escaping into our own little world where we can do whatever we want. We can do what we need to do without people interfering with that. You see how many green cards we have? I gave yeah. you all of mine. We have like 20. There's lots of different types of kids who come to Sudbury Valley School. Some have been here their whole lives. Some have just been here a couple of years. I spent four years at Sudbury Valley. And in my thesis, I like split up those four years um, into a different section because each one I had like a, a uniquely different um, learning experience and I had a, like a higher order of thinking every, every successive year. In my first year, I really spent most of that year just playing video games. One particular video game, actually. A lot of parents and a lot of people who don't know the Sudbury model like ask me, like, well, don't kids just play video games all day? And like, well, what if my kid just plays video games all day? And uh, I mean, that's, that's exactly what I did, and I certainly have no regrets. I did have a, a pretty close-knit group of friends who all shared the same exact interests as I did. And uh, we were intensely involved in that community. I mean, it was, it was just like anything else that you would be really intensely involved in. It just happened to be video games for us. How do you control it? Oh, here you go. How will you ever survive their onslaught <laughs> of death? <laughs> They're just evil bouncy balls. One. Okay, I should have found a safe spot. Actually, gotta fix this glitch. Yeah, well, in a couple couple minutes, you'll be blown away by my programming prowess. We studied those video games just like an economist would would study the stock market. And I think anything that you put effort into, that type of effort into, would yield some growth in any manifestation. A couple of years ago at the picnic, I got together a five-on-five -five basketball game just because we had a lot of players here and it just seemed like a good idea. And after that was done, I realized I had a lot of fun. So when the school year started up, I just decided to start up my own basketball tournament. Hey guys, there's 10 seconds left. No one is forced to play. If you want to play, then we all have a great time. And there's little kids and there's big kids and there's medium-sized kids. We really try and make it as fair as possible. Athletics of the school take a big part in more than just my life. People are running around, playing tag, playing sports, throwing around frisbee, swinging. I mean, when it's sunny and it's nice outside, you see people running around. And when it's raining outside and there's snow on the ground, we still play basketball at school. Oh, 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 oh. Can someone take a video? Press the center button and start filming. What? Press what? Center button. Okay. Is it filming? There's escalator rock, there's either lunge rock, turtle rock, and there's another name for it, but I forget. Staircase rock. Just a way of doing it. Climbing. Are you getting up this way? Yes, it's fun. Give me a challenge. This is more challenging. Yeah. What? That? Yeah. It's good. I think it's possible. Getting, yeah, well, everything's possible. Yeah. Before coming to Sudbury Valley School, I'd played guitar. It was a a growing interest in the background. And then the summer after the first year, I spent some time at um, Berkeley College of Music in a, in a guitar program. And it was like I had used my ears for the first time. In my second year, 
I was spending lots more time rehearsing for the SBS music productions that we put on a couple of times a year, and I was focusing a lot on that on that stuff. And it shifted from that all video games to almost almost all music throughout that year, and that was that was my major focus. I really like being able to focus on something that really takes my interest and in having as much time as I want really to focus on it or not focus on it if I'm not interested. Upside down. Good. Don't put something in there. Whatever color you want. I can mix colors. Can you mix it in here? Good. They actually took away my art program at my old school and I couldn't get through the day without art and now I can do it all day and I have the freedom to do it and to explore different mediums and explore different techniques and I think that's really important in anything you do to have that sort of freedom. Let's stop there. I think it's good Elizabeth. I think um, what I'm going to do is hook you and June together at this point because I just wanted to make sure that you were solid with the song, but you're solid. And I, she knows the piano part. Yeah. So now the two of you will put together an awesome band. Cool. I mostly play classical music. This year I've been focusing on W.C. Haydn, and now I'm working on a Chopin piece. At the moment I've got most of it roughed in, but I'm just working on this new section that I haven't really looked at before. I love having the pianos here at school because I can play just about whenever I want. There's a second piano up in the barn, so if this one's busy, I've always got another one. So I can practice for three hours a day if I want to. I mean, seriously, that monster is not big, but it's actually amazingly scary. The thing I like about making the movies is that I like the when you're done and you get to watch it and say that you made that movie. The scene that I'm working on is about where the major gets taken captive by the humongous and is put in with all the other little kids that were taken by the humongous. Well, it first started out as a box, obviously. Um, then we got some foam pieces. We, what do we, Aaron? What do we do to stick these on? duct tape them on and then we got ex um, expanding foam and then had it as a snow monster and then we spray painted it for the spring monster. Yesterday I, when I was filming I had 15 kids up here and at times that was chaotic. We're six days into filming and we have three days left. <laughs> fundraiser for the Music Corp. All the money that we're raising goes to the Music Corp to help buy instruments and supplies so we can play more music at the school. I know. What? Well, pickle. I'm getting one meal, so yes, I am getting a pickle. One. Does anyone here want an extra pickle? Take the pickle then. Yeah. I don't like pickles. I love pickles. I hate pickles. I love pickles. How do you make pickles? These pickles are awesome! The Music Corp is a bunch of people who like music, so they have meetings, and you can be a director, so you get to vote on stuff for the Music Corp for what they buy, and they have meetings whenever they want to decide something important that has to do with musical instruments or fundraising or something like that. The shows happen four times a year. And people start getting ready for them since like the last show. People start rehearsing and practicing and deciding what songs they want. I'm usually in the shows every year and it's a lot of fun to be in them and see everybody and usually the whole school goes to them. My third year was, it was a little bit of a contrast to the, to the first two in that I was, in the first two I had like a hobby that I was, I was doing all the time. I was always busy with that. Um, and then my third year, I spent a lot more time in the sewing room, which is a particular room of Sudbury Valley School that sees like the most amount of traffic, the most amount of conversation. It's a very, very crazy place. And I spent a lot of time in there just conversing and observing and listening to all these types of things being talked about. 
My most critical thinking was done during that year. I spent a lot of time just writing essays because I had talked so much uh, in the sewing room. We had so many both strange and intense uh, conversations. There was a lot of things that I, I wanted to not forget. <laughs> a lot of quotes from the day. And at first I was, I was just like jotting them down and then eventually I was writing full essays um, in an effort to not, to not lose any of the stuff that I thought was productive. Well, towards the end of my third year, I came to a couple of conclusions and I realized that while I absolutely love music, uh, that I wouldn't make a career out of it. And I had sort of an intense, absolute passion for, for cognitive sciences and neuroscience which came out of, of thinking about how we perceive music and how, you know, how music is such a fundamental aspect of you know, our cognitive processes. And more and more I decided that I was going to need to work up to a traditional like, college education to be able to go into this field. I call my fourth year like my adult year. I worked full-time job as a computer technician but I also spent a lot of time formulating the plans and putting together like what I would have to do, what I'd have to accomplish to be able to, to get accepted by a university. There's a quality about Sudbury Valley School kids that whether they like it or not, they're absolutely unique. Uh, they have a really, really unique educational background. The school gave me the gift of time to let my own interests rise to the surface. When you sit down to paint, you don't just sit and paint. You have to think about what you're doing and why. Any creative effort, perhaps any effort at all, requires a great deal of thought, even reading a book. You don't just read a book, you think about what you read, otherwise you're doing it for nothing. The school gave us the gift of time to relax, to have those things come to the surface that were there. It gave us time for reflection, for the introspection that you need to really develop your own creativity. I think that's a remarkable thing. The Sudbury Valley School does give them the gift of time to follow their passions. You didn't really see it, but there are classes held actually. But students choose the classes they want to go to. They decide when they want to read, when they want to learn to write, and all of them do. What they find is in the 45 year, over 45 years they've been around that when a child's ready to learn something, they learn it very fast and very deep. I was actually watching a TED. I, I hope you guys love TED. I love those videos. Uh, what you can learn from them are amazing. I was watching one yesterday about happiness and thinking about this. And he gave five things that you need to do to, to change your life to be a happy life. And I'm, I'm going to maybe talk later about those. But the thing he brought out is if you're happy and you're a mode of happiness, your brain functions better, you learn quicker, you understand deeper, and life is better. When you have the freedom, you learn that you can succeed at anything. I love that when that little girl says, everything is possible. That's the attitude you have to have, that everything is possible. It may take time, money, whatever, but it is possible. Students enjoy a childhood of freedom, respect, and trust. Students at this school want to be there I read a few times that they didn't like weekends because they had to leave school. They didn't like summer vacation because they had to leave school. They love school because they're doing what they love, what they're passionate about. The school provides the three great freedoms of personal responsibility. Freedom of choice, freedom of action, freedom to bear the results of action, the consequences. This next shorter video talks about the school meeting. This is where everything, where the students and staff run the school. I'll call this school meeting to order. Everyone could please first turn off your cell phones and direct your attention to the results of previous school meetings. 
As the chairman of the school meeting, I am essentially the chief executive officer of the school, which means that I do a lot of things from signing staff contracts and also I'm ex officio on a lot of the important committees, which means that I run a lot of them. I'm automatically, as chairman, a member of those. So things like managing the budget or dealing with staffing and admissions. I also run the weekly school meetings and kind of just help to manage the day-to-day -day school affairs. Is there any discussion? If not, we'll vote. All in favor? All opposed? Motion passes. The school meeting is extremely important because it's basically what runs the school. Everything is decided in the school meeting. And, you know, we've delegated to the JC to deal with judicial matters, and we've delegated to certain clerks and committees to deal with things. But ultimately, school meeting is the authority. Everyone that comes to the school is a school meeting member. Everyone has an equal vote. And I feel like the community of the school really teaches kids that they, you know, they're just as equal as any other person here. And I think that translates in the school meeting. It doesn't matter if you're 4 or 16 or 75, everyone gets one vote. Everyone gets to talk. And we're all equals and we make the decisions together by majority vote. The world and the school is constantly changing and evolving. And we do modify rules every now and then. And sometimes when we change one, we'll realize that that didn't quite work out and we'll go back and, you know, amend it or fix it. And uh, sometimes we realize there's, you know, new issues in the world that, you know, need tending to. We think about everything and we discuss everything and we debate everything. And if we didn't have the structure that we have of having two motions, a well-run school meeting where everyone gets their voice heard, the decisions that we made would not be as good. So at every school meeting, we have an agenda like this, and it has everything that you know, we plan to discuss, every item of business. Can we have a report from the clerks? Francis. We have five finished, zero new, and zero work in progress. So we are now discussing regular JC business, which usually takes about the bulk of school meeting. So the school meeting reviews all the reports and sentences and charges that the JC decided on. And sometimes they decide to change things, sometimes they don't. And we also deal with anything that has been referred to the school meeting. So that's usually more serious cases that the JC has decided they can't handle within their power. And then we move on to second readings, which is motions that we'll be voting on that day. And then written agenda, which is motions that were just put in. So we kind of discuss those and throw them back and forth. And then we'll vote on them next week. And then there's open agenda, which, you know, if there's an issue that wasn't in the written agenda, anybody can bring up. So you can say pretty much anything on the floor. And when that's over, we're adjourned. It's exciting and it's interesting. But the reason that it's the most interesting to me is because I really care what's going on in school. I mean, a lot of people, when there's something going on in JC that they think is important, will go to JC and the same thing with school meeting. And I think it's really, really great because I learned a lot from being JC clerk and I am learning a lot from being school meeting chairman and the whole process is one of the things that people benefit most from this school. Is there any discussion of the results? So I see in the school meeting decides the rules of the school there and at Sudbury Valley in Massachusetts there's quite a few rules but the kids have a hand in making the rules. If anyone breaks a rule, any individual in the school can make a complaint up against that individual. So if someone is being bothered by another student, they make a complaint, and it's brought before the JC, the Judicial Committee, where they um, make a decision on that. When the kids are involved in the rulemaking process, they live by the rules. They learn how to make the rules and prepare their lives by them. The school meeting, as you saw in there, there were staff there as well as students. Everyone's one vote. The staff are just members of the school, the same as the students. You heard her that she wrote, signed the contracts. Well, the contracts and the budget are decided at the school meeting. In fact, the contracts are for one year for the teachers. Every year, the school meeting has to vote to whether to keep that teacher or not. And all the students have a vote whether the teacher is kept or not. 
They also decide whether that teacher, what they make. They know the budget, they know how much money they have, they decide what they earn. And that's voted on at the school meeting. The students are fully engaged. They understand what it takes to run a school. We'll ask her. I will get one. All right, we have Isabella. Stand over there. So Danny brought you up in the office yesterday. Mm -hmm. Isabella was screaming in the office and hall and screamed at me when I told her to calm down. Oh. What happened? Okay. I was in the office talking to The JC is a group of kids and staff from the school and we deal with when people break rules. And basically how the JC works is that if you see someone breaking a rule or they do something to you that you don't like, you can write a complaint and then the JC reviews them, investigates them and figure out kind of what happened and whether they broke a rule or not. It's kind of like jury duty in a way. You're chosen, you've got to show up on your day, 11 o'clock, you've got to stay there through the whole thing. You get a vote, you get to sit there. And we have a staff that joins us and together we all decide. We all make the decision, we all make the choice of what the people are going to get as their charge, as their sentence, and it all works out. All in favor? I'll oppose report Motion passes. passes. All right, you want to call Sam in here? Nope. The way they made that is just, I think, genius. I mean, you get all kinds of perspectives from a little kid that might see only certain parts of the problem uh, all the way up to a staff member who might see beyond the problem or someone my age who might even understand my reasoning uh, more so than other people. I mean. The best part about it is that it's not just a kid my age uh, just saying, look, he's my friend, so I'm going to let him off. I mean, it's all these ideas coming together and making a, a final judgment. We have a lot of different rules, and most of them are basically common sense. But um, one of the biggest ones and one of the first ones we made was called infringement, which is basically that everyone has a right to you know, go about their day peacefully and be able to pursue what they want to pursue without people harassing them or being mean to them. So it's basically that you can't do anything to anybody that they don't want you to do. It's very nice to have this feeling in the community that if someone is bugging you or doing something you don't like, that you don't have to put up with it or you don't need to get an adult. You can say, stop or I'll bring you up. Well, when somebody writes a complaint, there's a line and they write witnesses. And so before we even call anybody in, the complainant, who's the person who wrote the complaint, or the person that they're writing the complaint against, we sort of talk about it as a JC and decide whether we want to talk to the person who wrote the complaint first, or maybe get one of the witnesses, sort of like, you know, a bystander that wasn't really involved, especially if it's a complaint which, you know, might be, well, so-and-so did this to me, but maybe he was provoked and the complaint doesn't say that. And you get to hear it from all sides and figure out really what happened from from everybody, not just the people who were involved. And from that, you'll, you'll write a report that goes with the testimony. You could write in it what people specifically said, what they didn't. Back in uh, public high school, you know, you do something and even if the principal might feel like you didn't necessarily do such a bad thing, sometimes he would stick to the rule book and even give you a really bad uh, I don't know, a uh, weekend of coming to school or something like that when you were just like five minutes late to, to class or something. Here, for example, if you break a rule even though there's no rule like that, you get to voice your opinion and whoever wrote the complaint gets to voice their opinion. They get to actually uh, come to a fair conclusion. I mean, you might have still broken a rule so you will get a punishment. Uh, but it might not be as severe, it might not be, uh, you know, a, a strict, already set out rule book for that. So, I mean, that's just the, the best thing you could really ever ask for, I think, uh, for being a, a person my age or even a little kid, you know? So, uh, I definitely love that part about school and I respect it a lot. I think there's definitely a satisfaction in, for me, working towards what the truth is, how you're going to get at it, how you're going to figure it out. And once you're done with it, it's an awesome feeling. I think that the school's really cool and I think 
it's really cool how people are allowed to have a say in stuff. Because the person who got brought up and the person who wrote the complaint, they both get to say what happened, and then they get to agree if they think that's fair or not. I think one of the keys is that it's a government by the peers, and I think that's one of the things that really hits home with people. It's your friends and the people that you see every day and want to spend time with who are saying, hey, don't do that, I like you, but you really can't do that here, and you can't do it in your life. Hey Nell, could you stand over there behind David? Thanks. Um, there was a Hershey's candy bar wrapper littered yesterday with the initials ED. Okay. Do you ever get things initialed ED or is it always ED? We are very clear about our procedures and everyone knows them from the minute they come into the JC for the first time. It's explained to them, younger kids and older kids. And, you know, a six year old is going to understand how to deal with something on a procedural level. You know, they say this is how it's done and this is the procedure and this is what order everything's going to happen in. And they understand both, you know, in the JC and in the school meeting. And if they're going to go into something like that in life after leaving school or while they're still at school, they're really going to understand that there is a procedure and that they have to follow it and how to follow it. It's explained to them. I think one of the things that sums it up is one of our most important rules is preamble, which says that all school meeting members are responsible for protecting the atmosphere of the school, which is of freedom and trust and fairness and order. That is just how we exist in school. We have a lot of rules, we really do. But all the rules are there to make sure that everyone can exist freely. It's a group of seven or nine students and one faculty that um, are elected by the school meeting, just as the chair of the school meeting was elected, and the committees and such. As they set the rules of complaints made that's brought before the judicial committee. They discuss it, they take witnesses. If they think they need to, they go out and investigate the complaint, and then they discuss it, they hear testimony, and then they make a decision. That decision can be reviewed by the school meeting. So there's a way of if the student doesn't like the sentence they got, he can take it, or he or she can take it to the um, school meeting. Now, no system's perfect. None of us in this moral state are perfect. For me personally, there's some things that I'd like to see changed in this model. They are to help the students set goals and to work to complete them. I think a little more structure in setting goals. They can set their goals to be whatever they want to be, but they need to set goals and work towards them, which I haven't seen currently in this. I think they need to meet weekly with their mentor to, to discuss and review their goals. And I talked about the five things of happiness. Let me hit those real quick right now. The first one, for 21 days, write three things you're grateful for in your journal. The next thing is daily write in a journal one positive experience. Another is exercise. Another is, I didn't bring my notes up on it, um, to do acts of service for others. And there's one other, but I don't remember it right now. But by doing those things, this professor from, well, a graduate of Harvard, um, has studied happiness. And he's gone around and that when we're in a happy state, Everything is better. It's your lens on the world. It changes reality and how you see it and how you know it and understand it. Some of the other things are um, some online classes. MIT is great. The Leader in Me program is a wonderful program. But I believe these principles are not only for this school. I believe there's principles that can be put into public education. Allow children more unstructured time for play and explore. Play is so important for young children. They learn more in play than anything. I don't know, my five daughters when they were young, many times I'd catch them playing school. Well, why were they playing school? Because that's what they'd been spending all their day doing is at school. That's what they saw. They were modeling what they saw. If you're open and able to play and see other things, you model what you see and feel. 
do not require high school classes. Only set the number of classes that are for graduation. When I was on the state school board, we were looking at upping the requirements for graduation for more math, more English, more. In my four years on the state board, I received more mail and calls on that issue than any other thing. And it was from parents in dance and art and music programs that were calling and saying, don't destroy our kids' hope. Some of the newer things are the deep learning and how you spend time in a project base to really learn something, not just superficial, and personalize the education. When I first on state board and studying education, I saw real quick what we needed to get as an, an individual education plan for every single student. Education needs to be personalized. One size does not fit all, and never has, never will. But that's what we're forcing our kids into. By third grade, you have to read. Well, what if they don't want to read till they're seventh, or eight years old? Or why are we compelling them, forcing them against what is best for them? Where do we go from here? I would love to start one of these schools in Utah County. I have the financial ability to do it. What I need are founders, people who have a passion for it, to do it, to work on it. I've worked out a few different business plans. These are some of the details. Really, I want founders to work on that and come up with what they think is best. Thank you. If you'd like more information, there's the Sudbury Valley website.